played in closure today would you cry for me hello everyone once again it's time for more enclosure so here's the um here's what i'm thinking uh i've been uh, so far uploading a video once a week uh, i believe consistently on thursday for this game um and i wanted to get this game done before christmas because you know it's it's already december and christmas is in two or three weeks and this is not really a, a Christmassy game. I mean, I originally played this because uh, because when I started playing it, it wasn't quite Halloween yet, and now already November's gone, already into December, and and you know this game, um, it might not seem like a very scary game right now, uh, but it really picks up towards the end. So we um, we're probably I'd say we're more than halfway through the game at this point. We're probably something like. Um, I don't know, 60-70% through the game, uh, or getting close to that point. But the last little bit of the game, probably the last couple of videos of the game, will we'll get really intense. The, the game actually gets quite, uh, quite a bit more, um, not exactly scary, but definitely more... Um, uh, I don't really know how to describe it. I don't want to give too much away because, it, you know, spoilers and all that. I don't want to give away too many spoilers. But the game definitely picks up from what we've seen. So I apologize if it's been kind of boring thus far. I, I, I mean, I think the game is interesting thus far. But I think a lot of people have probably gotten tired of it because I noticed my viewers, uh, my viewership numbers have gone down. The last video didn't get nearly uh, as many views as the past videos of this game have. So I think people have gotten tired of this game and it's gotten boring for them. So... Which is kind of unfortunate because those people who have stopped watching will never see the end of the game and never see it pick up because, like I said, it does get more exciting later on. But anyway, uh, what I'd like to do at this point is try to make two videos a week because uh, I think we're probably, we probably can finish the game in another three or four videos. And like I said, I'd like to get the game done before Christmas just to get out of the, out of the way because this is not really a Christmas game, even though it, it does have a theme of snow outside. But other than that, it's kind of... Uh, like I said, the ending is not very Christmassy, to be honest, so I'd like to get this done sooner rather than later, so I'm going to try and make two videos a week. So, that having been said, let's get on with playing Enclosure. So, what we did in the last video is we got this, um, yeah, this snow star flower. Very rare, very beautiful. Whom do we know who is interested in flowers? Of course, uh, it's Ben Green, the guy with all the plants in his room. So let's go ahead and talk to him about this flower. Maybe he has some interesting ideas to uh, to give to us about the uh, about the flower. And uh, I swear, Owen. I mean, I I understand Owen is supposed to be black or African American or whatever you want to call him, but. Why does he wear an all-black suit? Is he, I mean, he, it looks like he's—he seriously looks like he's dressed like dressed like a ninja, and wearing something on his head. And what, what is he, what is he doing? Carter's busy knocking on walls. Has he gone berserk? Despite his strange behavior, get closer first. Um, Owen, what are you doing? Hush, Mike. I'm ghost hunting. But Owen, uh, silence please, Mike. I might not hear the response to my knocking. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's Boo. Boo who? Boo who, I'm a ghost. Ha ha ha. Uh. Wow. I'm not even sure if the game is being ironic at this point or if it actually is taking itself seriously. Oh, when? Not now, Mike. All right. Um, I'm sorry I didn't read the joke. I was just, I was absolutely just taken aback with how funny it was. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. I did want to just quickly go into Dr. Lee's room because we can still go in there and yeah, entering Dr. Lee's room makes you think of the accident that killed him. It's a tragedy that Dr. Lee had to die in such a horrific way. I don't think that there's anything else that we can do here though, it's just a, a message that you get. I just wanted to show that the game actually gives you that message when you walk into his room. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and find Ben's room, the plant guy. Was it in here? Yes. 
Wow, I'm usually very bad at finding these rooms, but uh, I must have just, maybe I'm finally getting used to them. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and, let's see, can we talk to uh, Ben here? Does it still need more water? Yes, Mike, it does. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and give the uh, flower to Ben. Okay. Look here, Ben. I've picked this strange flower for you. Ben Green takes a look at the flower, then his eyes widen. Mike, that's a snow star. They're very rare. I've never seen one for real. Where did you find it? Well, I was just walking around outside, blowing up stuff. You know. Ben Green looks at you like he doesn't know. Never mind that, Mike. Where did you find it? Just outside, somewhere at the edge of a cliff. I'll go and investigate right away. Excuse me, Mike. Uh... Okay, Ben, but be careful you don't fall off the cliff. I will. See ya. Uh, this does not bode very well for, for Mr. Ben Green. He's probably going to fall off that cliff and get himself killed trying to pick those flowers. Oh dear. Uh, okay, well now that Mr. Green is gone, we can suddenly walk up here. Uh, was this that flower that, was this that plant that killed me before, or was it this one in the, maybe it was this one here in the lower right, I'm not sure, I don't even remember now. One of these plants here pricked me and caused my brain to pop out of my skull. Anyway, um, okay, so now we can approach this tree here. There's even a tree in here. A big piece of fruit is hanging from its trunk. And can we get the fruit? Okay. You reach out and pick the fruit from its owner. Yes, we can get the fruit. Let's take a look at the piece of fruit. This is a very ripe piece of fruit from the Abso tree. A, a, a Japanese tree? Really? A Japanese tree. Though it looks quite delicious, you'd better not eat it. It's rather poisonous. Hmm. I wonder, does the game actually let me eat the, the fruit? Hold on, let's... Let's save here and just see what happens. I'm just curious if, if the game will let me eat the fruit. Now you know that's going to kill you, so why try? Well, because... okay, so the game doesn't actually let us eat it. Okay. I'm going to restore just because... Uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't make much difference because the game didn't kill us for that. But you know, sometimes these games do crazy things where they remember things that you did like that and then they kill you for trying it later, like in King's Quest II when you try to kill the monk. Uh, anyway, so we've picked the, uh, picked the fruit, and now I guess we, it's not really clear what we're supposed to do now, um, I can give some indication as to what we're supposed to do next, but let's do a little bit of wandering around, actually, let's, uh, let's just wander around for a while and see what we can find, because uh, I think, hold on, let's see. Again, there are oil stains here. Indeed, this is kind of... This is almost getting old now. This uh, is kind of becoming a recurring theme. Can we do anything with the oil? You don't like to get your hands dirty. Can we smell the oil? I mean, I prefer Watson's cooking. I guess we can't really do much with the... Uh, can we lick it? Taste the oil? Okay, fine. Um... All right, I guess there's not uh, not much to be done, uh, not much to be done with that. Is the oil still there? Yeah, it's still there. Okay. Well, that was not as surprising as the first time we saw it. Anyway, I'm not sure how you're supposed to figure this out, but I think now we are supposed to go back to Ben Green's room, which if I remember right was here. And Ben Green's room has changed quite radically since the last time we were here. Uh, what a mess. That uh, glass sort of uh, aquarium that was on the table there has been broken, and there's blood on the bed. And these red things are not blood spots. Those are the ants that were previously in the aquarium. 
Ben Green is dead. The glass and farm lights broken on the bed, and ants are crawling all over the place. I guess technically it's not an aquarium, it's an ant farm, but it's basically the same thing. I mean, usually you can use the same thing for both purposes, right? It's just a watertight glass enclosure, so, yeah, enclosure. Um... No doubt. This time it's murder. How is it murder? I mean, maybe the ants just got out and killed him. All right, let's save our game here again. Because uh, it is pretty easy to die here. Watch out. Those ants look quite hungry. And you look, at least to the ants, quite tasty. Put one and one together. So the game is... Oh, I was going to say the game is trying to warn us, but actually it didn't really warn us. I know you're thinking about losing weight, but this is ridiculous. All right. Well, for fortunately, we did our adventure game due diligence, and we um, and we talked to Mr. Ben Green before he died. And you might remember that, uh, just like in Space Quest Two, you rub the fruit on yourself. Uh, be more specific. Do I have to mention a specific body part? Can I just say rub fruit on your body? Do you know what a your is? That would almost be insulting from a different game, but I guess that's something we can come to expect from Enclosure. Uh, what about just rub fruit on body? Okay, there we go. Okay. You squeeze the juicy fruit till it's sludge, then you rub the pulp on your body. That's a good sign. All right, and now we can walk among the ants because the ants won't bother us. So let's see, can we examine Ben's body? He's dead, all right. No one could survive such a blow to the head. His glasses lie beside him as a silent witness. Can we get his body? He's too heavy for you, all right. I guess that's not surprising. All right. Can we look at the glasses? His glasses lie beside him as a silent... I don't think glasses can witness to anything. Can we get the glasses? Yes, we can. When you look at Ben Green's glasses, you notice that only one spectacle glass remains intact. You take this one out and dispose of the rest. All right, so now we have a, uh, here we go, a spectacle glass. It's it's just a lens, isn't it? I mean, I wear glasses, and we don't call them a spectacle glass. We just call them the lenses. I mean, the, the metal or plastic part that goes around your head is the frame of the glasses, and then the glass parts that actually perform as the optics, those are called the lenses. You don't call them a spectacle glass, but, but then again, the people who wrote this game are not native English speakers, so maybe they thought that was a... The proper name on us. Although you see no use of it, the answer can be seen, even if it looks too far. That is actually a bit of a uh, bit of a hint. Anyway, uh, let's get out of here. Before I don't know how long it takes for the uh, for the fruit to wear off, or if it does in fact wear off. Well, is there a uh, picture or something still there? What's on this? Uh, there was an ant farm and some plants. I don't think the ant farm's on the table anymore. They forgot to update that message for this event, but that's okay. Let's get out of there and. Uh, now I guess we uh, we can do a little bit more exploring. There's really uh, the game sometimes doesn't give you a very good indication as to what you're supposed to do next. But uh, can we can we slip on the oil? No. Let's walk around here, and I think if we follow this hallway to the right, we will meet a couple of people. Yeah, so here's um, William and Charles. Let's go ahead and talk to them. Hey, William. Hi, Mike. Sorry, but I've got no time to talk to, to talk now. I'm busy making plans with Dr. Benson here. Oh, that's okay, William. See you later. Later, Mike. Uh, do we maybe want to alert these people that uh, that Ben Green has just died? Feeling any better since yesterday, William? I think this is as good as it gets, Mike. But please, let us talk. Okay, sorry. So, first we bump into William and say, Hey, William, how's it going? Are you feeling better? And now we tell him, Oh, by the way, Ben Green's dead. I'm sorry, William, but it's urgent. I just found Ben Green, and he's... Mike, please, let us talk. Uh, I'm sorry, William. Oh, it's okay. He's trying not to disturb the two men any further. 
really? Ben Green's dead, and we just just kind of oh, I don't want to bother them. I'll just I'll just leave them alone. All right, can we talk to Charles? Good day, Doctor Benson. Good day, Mike. Wait, no, I got the voices reversed. Good day, Michael. You look rather pale to me. Do you do you sleep well? Ah, oh, manage, Doctor. Be it barely. Hmm, just remember to listen to your body, Michael. Give it its rest if it needs any. Ah, will, Dr. Benson. Thanks. Doctor, I... Uh, Michael, I enjoy our little talks, but now is a bad time. I'm making plans with William here. Oh, okay. I'll leave you two alone. Thank you, Michael. We decide not to disturb the two men any further. Really? That's it? We just... All right, um... If we come around this way, can we find anyone else? There's Snowflake sleeping on the uh, on the bed again. That's so sweet when he's sleeping. All right, we'll just leave him. I guess the cat wouldn't really understand if we told him that Ben Green is dead. Can we find Watson somewhere? I mean, he's probably somewhere. Yeah, there he is. Is he stacking aprons? Ah, Watson, what are you doing? Hello, Mike. I'm unpacking this box of aprons. Ah, yes. I see, Watson. That's nice, Mike. Yes, nice that, nice that we can see him stacking aprons. What a thrill. I found Ben Green just now, Watson. He's... he's dead. What? Are you sure, Mike? I'm quite sure. There was blood everywhere, and ants too, I might add. That's terrible. I'll tell Mr. Mayfield. I'll tell Mr. Mayfield when I see him. You do that, Watson. And he just goes and continues stacking aprons. Oh, I'll, I'll tell. I'll tell William when I see him. But uh, for now, I'll just keep stacking aprons. I mean, I'm sure this isn't too urgent. Uh, this whole thing about Ben Green. I mean, he's dead already, right? And there's not really any emergency medical services around here. And even if there were, if he's already dead, it's too probably too late to call an ambulance. So. Keep up the good work. Wow, really? That's it? Okay. Well, I guess people don't mind too much that Ben uh, Ben died. That's pretty sad. I wonder, uh, wonder when I die if I'll be missed as much or as little as, uh, as Mr. Ben Green. All right, here we have the two ladies, uh, Lisa and Sarah, busy talking to each other. Can we uh, look at them? You're not sure what these two ladies are talking about, but it seems to be quite funny. They completely ignore you. You happen to overhear some words of their conversation. It's obviously about you and about Frank Bates. Women. Uh, what are they saying about us and about Frank Bates? I'm not even sure I want to know. Well, I probably do want to know. I'd like to know what... Uh... Can I talk to Lisa? No, I get the same... Same message. I, I would kind of like to know what they're saying. I mean, if I'm standing right next to them, I assume I can probably hear most of what they're saying, but the game doesn't tell us. Let's see. Can we uh, kiss these ladies? Smooth. Uh, really? So first there was snug, and now there's smooth. Not now, Mike. I'm talking. Sorry. Really? This is true love, ladies and gentlemen. You try to kiss someone, and you get as far as a smoo, and then they tell you not to kiss them because they're talking to someone else. That's, uh... Can we, can we try kissing Lisa? Uh, Lisa, as in sitting next to Sarah, as in not an option? Okay. All right. Well, that was very, uh... very amusing. But not very useful. But then again, the point of a game is to have fun. A game is not exactly a, not exactly a business utility that you run for the purpose of achieving something practical now, is it? So I guess if we had fun, then we we achieved our goal. Hmm. Owen's gone. He's no longer here in his ninja suit punching the wall. Uh, so what we want to do is actually go into Owen's room. I don't remember which room is Owen's, but... Uh, oh, we got lucky. It's, uh, it's this room, isn't it? Yeah, this is Owen's bedroom. Um, because, uh, yeah, because the telescope is here. And you remember, um, 
this message. The answer can be seen even if it looks too far. Uh, I don't know, the, the wording seems a little bit awkward, maybe again just because of the game's uh, slightly awkward English, but what we're supposed to do is use the glass, or really the lens, but use the, I don't think the game understands lens, or can, can we say use lens with telescope? Yeah, okay, we can say use lens with telescope. You carefully remove the broken lens and replace it with the spectacle glass. There, now the telescope is ready to be used again. And, indeed, let's go ahead and use the telescope. Okay, you pick up the telescope and carry it up to the watchtower where you'll have a much better view. And there we are, there's Mike peering through the telescope up here in the watchtower. Aha, press Control-C if you want to stop using the telescope. So this part is... Uh, there's not really much to see here, I mean it's just white sort of snow dunes and landforms of the place where we are. There's really not a whole lot here that's very impressive, uh, but there is something that we need to find, and you'll probably know it as soon as we see it. Um, it should be... Oh, there it is right there. See that little sort of sparkling thing? Yeah. Hey, what's that? Something is sparkling between those two mountains. You decide to investigate it later on. So we need to get the game to uh, acknowledge that we've spotted something there, and now Mike knows where something is. So uh, let's go ahead and press Control c to stop using the telescope. You could quickly return the telescope to Owen Carter's room before he misses it. And I think that's it. We're done with the telescope for now. So uh, what we want to do now is um, go and investigate that glint. But first, let's find Owen, since he's uh, he's not in his room obviously, since we were just there, and he's not here punching the wall. Where could he be? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think he's in the doctor's office, which, if I remember right, is just down from here. And then through here. Is that right? Yes, there is, uh, there's Owen sitting at the... Uh, at the table there. Owen Carter is sitting behind the desk and is making notes. Let's talk to him. Hi, ah, Owen. What are you doing? I'm taking notes, Mark. I'm trying to make a profile of our ghost. What have you come up with so far? Well, I must say this asp this aspiration. Apparition is one of the stranger kinds, Mark. What do you mean, Owen? How shall I put it? It's the first time I ever saw a ghost make actual physical contact. You're talking about the oil, I presume? Yes, and I'm not quite sure what to think of Dr. Lee's death as well. I see what you mean, Owen. What further actions were you planning, Owen? William Mayfield and I decided to organize another seance tonight, so please be there. I will, Owen. Speaking of William Mayfield, how did you two meet? Well, I learned of William Mayfield's plans to go on this expedition. When I heard there was an actual ghost involved, I kinda invited myself. How did you do that, Owen? I visited a charity ball organized by the Mayfield Welfare. There I talked to him about his mission and my profession. At first he wasn't convinced I should participate, but I talked my way into it. And here you are. Yes, Mike, here I am. I just saw the most horrific thing, Owen. Now, see, this is about priorities. First, it was important that you tell me the whole story of how you meet William, but now that we got that out of the way, Green is dead. What? What was that? Please, Mike, let me finish my notes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Owen. I just thought you wanted to know. Sorry, what were you saying? Sigh, never mind. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, I'm not really surprised. I just think it's funny. Everybody's just reacting as if it as if it were a normal thing. I guess people are used to this now. Now that uh, Dr. Lee died, the fact that somebody else died is just, uh, oh, well, oh, um, it's not really, uh, not really unusual. People die all the time, don't they? 
He decided not to disturb Owen Carter any further in his writing. Yeah, he's busy writing. The fact that uh, the fact that Ben Green's dead is not important. Nobody's going to investigate that. All right. So, um, what we need to do is um, hold on. Let's first uh, let's first come down here, and I need to find the uh, not this room. So it's probably over here, then, on the right-hand side, if I remember right. I guess I could check the map since it's right there, but I'm pretty sure that if I come down here... Yeah, this is where I want to be. I want to come back in here because... Hey, Goodman, come over here, will ya? I want to talk to you. That is... None other than Frank Bates, and he's dressed in some blue overalls uh, because he's working on one of those snowmobiles. So, let's see, what is... Uh, Frank Bates is busy tinkering with one of the scooters. All right, let's talk to him. Hey, Bates, do you even know what you're doing? Ha <laughs> ha, Goodman, you're the one who landed the chopper, remember? It took me ages to repair that thing. It sure did. Do you mean to tell me the chopper's fixed again? You've got that right, Goodman. It's ready for takeoff. That's quite a relief, Bates. Uh, hold on. Let me just quickly save here. Because I just want to check this out. So, Goodman claims that the chopper is fixed. Can we actually go out and fly it? Because if the chopper is fixed, then maybe we should fly away and get, get out of here. I mean, why hasn't he let... Why hasn't he made a group announcement and let us know that the chopper is uh, is ready? Wouldn't that be kind of important to know? I mean, I guess... It's not really like we necessarily want to escape from here. I kind of feel like... I kind of feel like we should be getting out of here because two people have already died and there appears to be some kind of ghost problem and weird things are happening, so maybe it would be a good idea to get out of here before uh, before worse things happen. But I guess the original plot of the game must go on. I mean, we're not really planning to leave yet until we get to the bottom of this whole ghost business. Probably would be prudent to leave now, but the game won't let us, I, I bet. I mean, the, it looks like other people don't want to leave. They want to still see what'll happen. But let's just quickly check the chopper. Doesn't look any different to me, but then I don't really... Frank Bates has successfully repaired the helicopter, at least though it seems. All right, can we fly the helicopter? What's a fly? Can we get in a helicopter? You don't need to go anywhere, Mike. Don't bother. Uh, really? All right. Well, I kind of feel like it would be nice to get out of here and just go back home, but I guess we, uh, guess we can't. All right. All right. Well, the chopper is fixed. At least that's that's good news. Let's keep talking to Frank. I just found Ben Green, Bates. He's dead. What? Are you sure, Goodman? He was killed by a blow over the head. There was blood everywhere, and his hands have escaped. You must be delusional, Goodman. I just spoke to him a couple of minutes ago. But, but... Please, Goodman, it's not funny. But, ah, oh, never mind, then. Are the snow scooters even working after all these years, Bates? That's what I'm trying to find out here, Goodman. It looks promising, though. Uh, was there something special you wanted to tell me, Bates? Listen, Goodman, I've almost fixed these snow scooters, so what do you think? Want to take these babies out for a test ride? Uh, sure. Sounds like fun. Okay, Goodman, it's a deal, then. Maybe we can investigate something I saw with the telescope. What do you see, Goodman? Something sparkling in the mountains. I don't know what it is yet, but it looks important. Because any kind of shiny object must be important. There's one thing, Goodman. I can't seem to find the ignition key for the second scooter. Could you try and find it for me? That's okay, Bates. I'll look for it. Uh, so basically, he just... Alright, he just wants the... Uh, the ignition key. All right. 
Well, at this point in time, uh, it might be a good idea to once again read that poem that we got. Because remember, uh, the poem ends in a line about the key for the ride. So, let's read the poem again. I see myself and I move me aside. This is how I obtain the key for the ride. So we know this is about getting the key for the ride, and you can probably... It's probably not too much of a stretch of the imagination to figure out that this is relating to that key that Frank is just talking about. Uh, but what's this about? I see myself and move me aside. Well, where can you see yourself? Uh, if you have any doubts about the answer to that question, there is a funny internet comic strip. Is it a Cyanide and Happiness strip? I think it might be Cyanide and Happiness. If not, it's some, it's some webcomic like that where a guy is at a job interview and uh, the interviewer asks him, uh, where can you see yourself in 10 years? And the uh, interviewee answers, in a mirror. And then the interviewer says, welcome aboard, you're hired. And then the picture sort of zooms out and you see that uh, the company is called Smart Asses Incorporated or something like that. So there is a mirror here. Can we look in the mirror? Oh, ma. Uh, so we can see ourselves in the mirror, and if we move the mirror aside, do you know what an aside is? Uh, can we just say move mirror? Yes, we can. And there we go. There is a key inside the small cabin. Oh, you don't even have to, you don't even have to type get key. It asks if you want to take the key. So let's say Y for yes. You take the ignition key. Well, that was straightforward, wasn't it? Uh, and there's the ignition key. It's an ignition key. Wonder where it goes. Well. This part is not too hard to figure out. Once you get the key, it's not too hard to figure out where the key goes. And so now, the course of action is pretty obvious. Let's go back to Frank with the key. William and uh, Charles are so busy talking there. They're really... Uh, really getting along. All right, so come back in here. And now is a very good time to save the game. Uh, because we're about to have a jolly old time with Frank. Let's talk to Frank. Hey, Goodman, found the ignition key already? Ah, sure did, Bates. Here it is. That's great. Let's go, then. And the reason I saved... Well, Frank Bates finishes his repairs to the snow scooters. You look up Sarah. You tell her about your planned journey. Sarah agrees, although she looks somewhat doubtful. She just told us not to go off wandering around somewhere, and now we're going off somewhere, but all right. You tell Sarah about the gruesome discovery you've made concerning Ben Green. Sarah's quite shocked and promises you to warn William Mayfield and investigate it. When you return to the garage, Frank Bates has fully repaired your transportation. Minutes later, you two leave for the mountains. Okay, so the reason I wanted to save is because of this. It is an arcade sequence. Watch it, Mike. Yeah, I think you can hit those... Wow, I'm doing badly. Uh, you can hit those things four times, and on the fourth time you'll die, so try to avoid hitting them, obviously. Um, I don't know why this particular sequence bugs me so much. Um, I usually don't mind arcade sequences and adventure. I know back in the day when Sierra had a habit of putting these sort of sequences into their games, people often complained about them and said that it was terrible and that it was really uh, uh, an ordeal. I never really minded these arcade sequences too much, but uh, for some reason this one rubs me the wrong way. Maybe it's just because it's maybe it's just because the snowmobile moves so slowly that it's really quite difficult. You took one encounter too many, bashing your body against the window literally crushed most of your entrails. You've died due to internal bleeding. And what I'd like to know is if we can save in the middle of the ride, because I know that's kind of cheating. I know some people say this is save scumming or whatever you want to call it, but you know what? I don't really care. <sighs> Crying out loud. Hold on, can I? Okay, it looks like I can save, but I already hit something once, so I prefer to prefer to restore the game and try that again. The problem is that the snowmobile moves so slowly, and it's hard to really. I mean, you, obviously, you can't predict where when those things are going to pop up, 
and so um, all right, I'll just save here. Yeah, like I said, I don't usually mind these arcade sequences that much, but for some reason this one just really, really annoys me. Like sand in my pantyhose or something like that. You know, it's just, just that that feeling of, wow, that is really annoying. Ah, like that. It, it just it just keeps happening. I don't know. I, I don't know if the game... What? I don't know if the game deliberately tries to... Um, tries to put those... It looks like it does, actually. It looks like it deliberately tries to put those things where you are so that... Wow. I am terrible about this. I'm reminded of when I played... Uh, what was the name of the game? With Crowley 9 or something like that. Some, some game based on some Finnish TV show, which I played a while ago with Crowley 9. Reminds me of that. I was just terrible. It's the same kind of game. It's the same sort of thing where you just keep going to the right and you have to dodge the things that come from the right side of the screen. And I was terrible at that. I just kept running right into them. Again, because the character moves so slow. <sighs> partly because the character moves so slowly and also partly because it really seems like the game actually deliberately tries to put them where, where you are. And so it really tries to... Wow. See that? That's just like... I... Am I just that bad or... Or what's going on? I don't even know. I... I, I mean, I, I'm willing to accept that I probably suck at this. Uh, that's that's fair to say. But... Um, it seems a little bit... Unfair to me. Ah... I mean, I can take four hits, so I, I, I guess I don't have to. Rest I don't have to restore after every single one, but I'm just so, I'm just so, uh, ah, I'm just so zwenglerish about this that I, uh, I would prefer not to take a hit if I can avoid it. This, this is taking forever. This is, this is. I apologize, everyone. This is, this is ridiculous. This is really. I don't think the. Uh, don't think the game designer is intended for someone as bad as me to be playing this sequence. I I really don't know if I'm just making the wrong decisions. I I think it's pro partly a problem of timing. My timing and my reactions are all off. I'm in, I'm supposed to be moving away from them, but somehow I'm reacting in such a way that I'm I'm moving directly into those things instead of moving away from them, which is a oh okay. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's the end. Both you and Frank Bates crashed into a large rock. The collision flings your bodies through the cold air. That sounds so poetic. You land somewhat further. In pain, but intact. Intact is one word. Which can't be said about the snow scooters. Uh, what do you think, Bates? They can be repaired, but it'll take a while. All right. What can I say? It's white, it's cold, and it's windy. I, welcome to Greenland, Mike. This place looks a lot like the mountains you saw through the telescope. Okay, so it looks like we found the spot. We we did find the uh, end of arcade sequence. Yeah, I, that was kind of embarrassing. I apologize that I did so badly with that, folks. But uh, yeah, we're here. This is uh, this is the place where we were supposed to be going. This is the spot that we saw glinting through the uh, telescope. So next time, we'll explore this area and see just what did Mike see through the telescope. I hope that you'll join me for further adventures with Enclosure. Until then, thanks for watching, everyone, and I will hopefully talk to you all soon.